that. Uh, I want to turn back to the markets, though, of course, as we're seeing a play out here today. Uh, tech, once again, uh, suffering a bit of the worst in terms of what we're seeing, although kind of a muted session in the Dow, again, still holding in the green. Of course, yesterday, we, we had a deeper conversation around some of these inflationary pressures and the disconnect between maybe the optimism the White House has, the Biden administration has for things to improve or maybe already have improved in relieving some of those supply issues and where the Fed's at and how long this could continue. For more on that, I want to bring on Matt Miskin, John Hancock Investment Management Co-Chief uh, Investment Strategist here with us. And Matt, good to be chatting with you again. Uh, obviously, you heard Brian walking through some of what we're hearing from the Lale Brainerd hearing and testimony confirmation. But uh, when you assess kind of where we're at in this recovery, how long do you see some of those uh, inflationary headwinds continuing? Yeah, well, as Brian said, I mean, two of the biggest things have been the supply chain disruptions and the fiscal stimulus. And as the, as the pandemic comes more under control over this year, as the Omicron wave hopefully dissipates, we likely see, you know, the supply chain disruptions come off and then we're not going to get more fiscal stimulus. It's, it's at least it's very highly unlikely. So that, in our view, does cause inflation to come down over the course of the year. But the recent development, which I think is rippling through markets even today, is the commodity complex has got another bid. Uh, so oil prices are rising, com copper prices are rising. And so this is lifting that inflationary uh, kind of uh, theme through uh, markets. You're seeing value do a bit better today. Cyclicals do better. Um, but we would look at you know earnings season as the next big catalyst, and that's coming up uh, here just tomorrow. And what are your expectations on that front? I mean, you know, we got Delta kicking things off today, but obviously the big banks reporting tomorrow. Uh, no question, all the executives are going to get questions about how they view uh, the price pressures building, whether in fact they are starting to moderate. And what specifically are you going to be looking for on that front? Yeah, it's going to be all about margins. I mean, to your point, it's it's going to be how are you able to raise prices, but then also keep costs under control. And a lot of costs are going up uh, across the board. Input costs, labor costs are going up. Uh, so margins are going to be under attack into 2022. And so, you know, I think in, in Q4, things are still pretty good. I think the earnings are still going to be pretty uh, lofty, you know, analyst estimates are looking for about 20%. But as we go into Q1, into Q2, we're seeing real deceleration in earnings. So we're talking low uh, to mid to maybe even high single digit earnings growth across sectors. Earnings growth is going to be much harder to come by into 2022. And so um, you really want to find select pockets opportunity. Those either companies that have organic earnings growth or ability to raise prices and keep costs under control. We're looking for operating leverage as one of the key components uh, to find good earnings growth in 2022. Yeah, I guess the difficult position now that we find ourselves in kind of having seen what played out uh, last year in terms of the up downs of tech and value you know, as a strategist, as you kind of see it, it's tough to kind of consider where the market might be in terms of, I mean, we know expectations on the earnings front and rate hike front, but I guess the the animal spirits, if you will, of some of the enthusiasm for some of those tech names to get hit again as we move forward, or maybe enjoy some of the upside if the Fed does indeed take its foot off of the bricks. I mean, how do you kind of weigh that piece of the puzzle as investors look ahead to, all right, how should I be allocating? Yeah, so non-profitable tech is, is something we're not going to like into this year. And, and we think there's technology companies that have great balance sheets, good return on equity, good margins. Those are the tech companies we like. And those are typically higher in the market cap spectrum. So larger cap, we like high quality parts of the growth space. But as you move down in cap, we find less and less opportunities. So mid cap growth, small cap growth. We really would diminish that as a part of a portfolio. If you're going to use mid cap or small cap, we'd go to the value side. And we're seeing good earnings. We're seeing cheaper valuations, more cyclicality. They like inflation. So they're well situated. But we do like the quality part of the market in the, the growth space, the tech space. And those businesses, you know, we think will actually get more love as the year goes on. Right now, as the year has started, it's been a cyclical risk on market. Um, you know, globally, it's been about, you know, reflation and positioning. We think that dissipates as the year goes on. And we would pick up profitable companies, even in the tech space that have not done well to start the year, for as the year goes on, the economy slowing down a bit. 
Yeah, and obviously a lot to keep a lot of our viewers and ourselves occupied here in 2022, but appreciate you chatting. Matt Miskin, John Hancock Investment Management, co-chief investment strategist there with us. Appreciate it.